Do you drink? Alcohol? Mm -hmm. Very, very moderately. Mm -hmm. I mean, wine, you mean? Well, let's see, wine. I would prefer beer. Mm -hmm. I like beer, and the other night I had, I had one of the specialty drinks at the Ritz. And what's that? Oh, I had like an apple martini mm -hmm. with, with uh, you know, some raspberry froth on the top. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I hate it when that happens. I do hate it when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever tried scotch, scotch and soda? No. Well, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> scotch and soda I've tried but I, I think I think my heart starts racing when I drink scotch and soda so I don't like it well you, you know that is a fact oh no I know because I, I drank a scotch, of so, scotch and soda once when I was going to one of one of Ben's school plays and I was so nervous that he was going to make a mistake that I had a scotch and soda mm -hmm. and then I was twice as nervous mm -hmm. I mean different chemicals are so affect people differently mm -hmm. oh there's no doubt I'm definitely a downer girl tell me what that means what that means is I I don't like anything that stimulates my nervous system Ben my son tells me that my nervous system exists outside my body in a plume mm -hmm. and so there are I'm a lot of people who think that <laughs> <laughs> about me or Makes me less less jittery. I mean, I definitely have a problem with with feeling hyper and and uh, you know anxiety filled, and that's the drug of choice. I mean, I don't take any any uh, Valium or anything like that because those are more dangerous drugs. But Neurontin seems seems to be a good drug. Can you go to sleep without anything? Uh, any, like any like drug? pillows and sheets. <laughs> no. And, and, and any any help any, any I have been able to recently I've been able to fall asleep just very very swiftly I don't know why but what about in the past well sometimes I, I think these are very personal questions but you know I have taken Ambien which is a, a, a rather wonderful floaty drugs isn't that great I see chairs around me I see chairs in the form of people uh, tables for me it is <laughs> It's just odd, isn't it? I'll be working at my computer, and the ambience starts to work, and all of a sudden, furniture starts coming up around me and talking to me and saying, that's good what you're writing. Is that true? Yes. And Ambien does that? Yes. Do they advertise that as such? <laughs> <laughs> is, that a, is that a part of this, this, the marketing of the drug? <laughs> no, it's more like butterflies flying in your window. The thing, the thing about it is that it's it's it stops at about five o'clock in the morning. It so does. You shoot up in bed after four hours, and you say, "What's this?" I <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. I, it's exactly, and it's five a.m. Oh gosh! Well, they have to make a longer acting one. A little too early for the wake-up tape. <laughs> it's still dark. Here's a song from Moonlight Serenade. Now, Carly, I had advised you to say, where's it a hurt, baby? I know, uh, and I couldn't change it in time. That's what Sinatra used to do. I Where know. does it hurt, baby? Where does it hurt, baby? baby? <laughs> I get a chance to say it now, right after the song. Where does it hurt, baby? Right. <laughs> that's great. Uh, then he would reprise it and come back. I would sacrifice it. I'm Jonathan Schwartz. She is... Carly Simon. Three o'clock in the afternoon, almost exactly in the east, and high noon on the west coast, summertime, ferocious heat in the west, and a hot but but palatable Sunday here in the east. I'm with Carly Simon on this Sunday. Uh, Carly's made this beautiful album called Moonlight Serenade. We're also listening to songs that sh that she has has 
has a connection with of one kind or another. Carly, you once told me that uh, uh, President Clinton, you, you uh, knew him from Martha's Vineyard because that's where he went often, um, told you that when Otis Redding died, I felt I couldn't go on. Is, is that a fair quote? Yes, he, he said that to me. I think it was the first time, or the second time that we met. And he, um, we were... We, we were just talking about Otis over dinner, and and we were talking about Try a Little Tenderness, in fact. And I said, boy, that's a man that we really, really miss now, don't we? And he said, yes, the day that Otis died, I thought I couldn't go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I got it. I've got it right. Yes, we just told the same story. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> you say you were speaking with President Clinton? Uh, but I've met him on many islands, actually. <laughs> That's a slight change. <laughs> I have seen him on more than one island. So. Let, let's, let's, island. Let's, which islands? Let's list the islands. Ah, Manhattan? Tor Tortola, Manhattan, Bermuda, um, the Lesser Antilles. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved that. <laughs> The poor people on the lesser Antilles. <laughs> Those are the people who think they're all at fault for everything. <laughs> but in any event, now now that we know the whole story, uh, here is this record that you've picked. Uh, it's 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 Otis Redding singing "Try a Little Tenderness." <laughs> Just a knockout. Where do you where do you get where do you get permission to say na 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 na? I mean, when does that finally come to you that you can say na 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 na? Well, on Mood Indigo, Sinatra goes no 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 no. That's not the same as na 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 na. <laughs> well, on the, I've heard the session tapes. And on the first four or five takes, that's what Sinatra did. Na, 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 na. Oh, he did really? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> didn't at all. Did I think you need a special pass. I do? No, just Otis. I mean, I, I think that, I think you gain a certain, you know, you just get elevated. Actually, oh, James good. Taylor sings na 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 really really well and convincingly and and he doesn't seem as if he's being you know as if he's trying to be a southern man mm -hmm. he just does na 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 really well i remember standing between the two of you uh in a in a you had an apartment on the east side you were moving into uh, and there was this 62nd em street right and there was at this empty room except for uh uh, stereophonic equipment, and there were th three earphones, and you had just recorded Mockingbird. And so we all, I stood between you and James, and we all listened to Mockingbird. If someone had passed through the room, they would have passed through in a, a silent room. <laughs> <laughs> right through a silent room. <laughs> But they wouldn't have heard anything. But what I was hearing was Mockingbird. Now that that's one of those records like Cruisin'. Uh and and there are a few, but I can just put it on a loop pretty much. Uh did you know what you had when you finished? Yes. That was one of the few that I just thought it's so irresistible. And and it was um it it was the song that I used to put Sally to sleep to every night. I I just used to rock her and dance to it and she would fall asleep. But I just genuinely loved that song and I love and I love James's and my version of it. I love Inez and Charlie Fox's version of it too. Mm -hmm. But then there's Aretha. Oh, did Aretha do it? You bet you. Mockingbird? Oh yeah. With somebody else. I don't remember who it up. It's it's a it's a terrific record. Well, how could it not be? It is it's great. But yours is electrifying, and uh, it, it, I hear it in the back of my head, and you knew what you had when you finished it. Yeah. 
how 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 long? How many takes on Mockingbird? How many? How long did it take? Oh, it takes. It, it took a long time. I mean, it took about not a long, long time. Not like you're so vain, which took a uh, hundred takes. But a um, hundred. A hundred. Why? Because we did it with so many different drummers. Those were the days when you could fly drummers from Los Angeles to London, and uh, and it was nothing because you had such enormous budgets. Mm. And so we had first Jim Gordon playing playing drums on it, and Jim Richard felt it didn't make the cut, and so we brought Andy Newmark in, and Andy Newmark played, and then, and but that but Andy Newmark was already in London, but Richard didn't feel that that was right, and so he sent for Jim Keltner, who was in Los Angeles. So Jim came over to London and did it. We ended up using the first take of Jim Gordon's, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but that was nothing to fly to fly people halfway across the world to do a drum part, mm -hmm. and then I had to do my vocal endless amounts of time. Uh, just because Richard, I, I wasn't getting the right energy into it, and Richard was a stickler for the right amount of energy, and and he and he really does get it. He really does get the the whole the, the whole finesse of energy. What was the song titled again before it became your so vain? It was called the Ballad of a Vain Man. Even up to all the test demos that I got, it was called Ballad of a Vain Man, which I had, which I I loved. Bob Dylan's version of Ballad of a Thin Man. And so when I wrote Ballad of when when I wrote You're So Vain, it seemed as if I was writing a ballad about another man who had it who who had another, you know, particular thing about him which was vanity. And I always called it the Ballad of a Thin Man. That's it was always called that up until the very end until Jack Holzman at Electra said, I don't think that's the that's the proper name since it refers so much to the Dylan song. Here is the Dylan song. <laughs> That is the, the ballad of the thin man. And here is the ballad of a vain man. Not many people know this, but that song is about the actor Arnold Stang. <laughs> it's very, I've never heard that before. <laughs> You know, I think. Do you I remember think, him? I do remember him. <laughs> I think if you thought carefully, you'd know who this song is well, about. Obviously, I know who it's about. Yeah. That's not important. It's a terrific record. Uh, from the start, in in making that record, uh, did you say "Son of a Gun" um, at the beginning? "Son of a Gun." At the, yes, it was impromptu. From the very war, from the start of the one hundred takes. Um, from the start of the vocal takes. Yeah, well, because actually, there were instrumental takes that lasted. A, that well, were like, ob obviously the vocal takes. Yeah, uh, yes, I sang it right away. Mm -hmm. Was Jagger on all of the vocal takes? No, Jagger came in um, the last. He called me. Harry Nielsen and I were doing the backups on in, af after the final vocal had been sung in Air Studios in London, and he and I were doing them together. And Jagger called. And I picked up the phone and he said, Hello, baby. What you doing? And I said, Well, Harry Nielsen and I are just doing the backups to your so vain. Please come down and join us. So he came down and joined us. And he came into the recording studio. And the three of us did it. And Harry Nielsen was, was aware of the of the um the obvious connection that Jagger and I had vocally. And so he so he stepped out and he said, I think the two of you really have it. And that's how it happened. And that was just one evening. Oh, he, just really? That was really, the, just one evening. Because you can he hear hear his yelping throughout. It's so distinctive and yeah. dramatic. Yes, he's good. 